and joins us now. Mr. Ramakrishnan, good morning and thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, very strong numbers this time, but give us some uh, you know, guidance. How does the way forward look? In the second half of the year, what kind of realistic loan growth are you looking at? And by the full year, where do you think you'll end? Uh, as I said uh, in the past, I think I'm. Uh, uh, what we are experiencing is uh, 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 double-digit growth as of now, and for the full year also, probably I would uh, tend to put the numbers as 12 to 13 percent kind of growth for the full year. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if things uh, pan out well, I'm sure it can be a little more than that. Uh, so that, as far as uh, asset growth is concerned, um, as far as the uh, uh, NIM is concerned, I, I my guess is that. Uh, we are currently, for the quarter, we are at about 3.2% and for the bank as a whole, we are at about 2.98, close to 3%. Probably I would um, uh, continue to feel that it will be uh, inching up to maybe 3.1% kind of numbers for the full year because we are expecting that uh, liquidity and uh, uh, the way the loan growth, uh, both will have, to, will have to closely monitor as to how we play out these things. Okay, so, that's important, uh, sir. You're saying, uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Uh, Murli. You're saying that uh, NIMS could come under pressure, you will have to raise deposit rates. Is that what you're saying? I would say that it's actually NIM has always been under pressure for a bank like ours. If you look at, we are actually competing with the large set of banks and uh, several medium set of banks. So NIM is always uh, uh, something which we are extremely uh, cautious about. So it's uh, it's clearly we'll have to uh, uh, at the kind of assets which you are onboarding and the kind of liabilities which you are raising both will have to make a lot of sense. That's the reason why, in, if you look at our liability growth, uh, I've been continuously saying that we've been uh, consciously growing our CASA, which has grown uh, to almost 34.5% now as of Q2, and which used to be, uh, if you recall a few quarters back, it used to be below 30% level. Mm. And uh, if you look at deposits also, in term deposits, bulk deposit is something which we've been uh, degrowing because it was high cost uh, deposit for us. And that, I think almost the work is done now. Now, from now on, probably we'll be looking at very closely in what bucket do we need to raise uh, deposits yeah. and how we deploy it. I was going to ask you that. Actually, the uh, you know the one or two points of worry in your results, an otherwise very good set of results, is that deposit growth is only uh, less than 2% year on year and only 0.3% quarter on quarter. Uh, is the degrowth of bulk deposits over now? Can we expect better numbers? Yeah, it's it's almost over. Still, we have about a, a couple of thousands of crores of bulk deposits. We will continue, but given the fact that now the uh, inflation is high and the deposit rates are on the higher side, probably it might make sense not to uh, you know play it down too much. Probably we'll continue to keep them and we'll continue to see how we can uh, overall uh, bring down our cost of uh, deposits. Okay. okay. That's, that's all right. Hi, Mr. Ramkrishnan. And, uh, you know, the street is clearly enthused. The stock price has moved big time. So we'd like to know further details. I believe your corporate loan book as well. From March itself, it's shown some traction. I believe it's up more than 20%. And you're, uh, you're lending to better rated companies as well is what I gather. So putting that into perspective, uh, if you could give us a couple of numbers on the credit cost, annualized credit cost, what is it likely to be for this year? And also on the slippage ratio, what is the rough range you're working with? Slippage, we're expecting continue to be around, uh, let's say, 2% kind of levels. And uh, 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 credit cost, probably, I would put it at about 1.25 to 1.3%, which, which is a, a far uh, lower from what we used to experience in the last seven years. Mm -hmm. So, Murli, another outstanding number, uh, besides the rise in margins uh, related number, is the cost to income. I mean, 56.6 uh, is high, perhaps, by other bank standards. But you were at 82. That's coming down to uh, 56 is excellent. Is there more room uh, to bring it down, any number you're working with? Because those are at least costs you can control. Yeah, of course, the target for cost income, uh, as I've been saying, is for the best banks, it's at about, let's say, 45% yes. level. For, mm -hmm. for a bank like ours, the first benchmark probably would be 50%. Uh, we need to bring it down below 50%. But the best part of it is, uh, see, the uh, uh, cost income, as it's very obvious that the more your income keeps going up, your uh, mm. ratios start you know, playing out. So the fact that our new book, I mean, this the whole uh, uh, background of the whole thing is that the new book which have added from October 2020 onward, that's when I took charge as MD, uh, we have added about 34,000 crores of book in which I have NPA of less than 10 crores. Mm. So it's about 0 to 2% is my NPA in my new book. 
if i continue to churn my portfolio you will clearly see that my provisioning numbers mm. will start dip majorly from whatever current levels are and naturally it will impact uh, the it will positively influence my uh, profit Fair. net profit that, uh, i am fairly confident that with the way now the behavior changes happened in the team and the way we are now sourcing and underwriting i am fairly confident that uh, the uh, 50 is clearly the first benchmark and okay. i'm sure try to move towards the uh, the way the best banks are run today at short okay. percentage Okay. Just coming back to loan growth, right? You did mention that 12 to 13 percent is your target for the full year. We were just speaking to SBI, who told us that there's a big comeback in corporate capex now. Uh, so for you, between retail, a large chunk, of course, for you comes from retail, from gold loans, etc. But uh, between retail and corporate, where are you seeing maximum traction, and are you also seeing a return of corporate capex? No, actually, contrary to what you're saying, our growth has actually come from corporate. If you look at our uh, Delta uh, advances growth, it has come predominantly from corporate. And corporate also, it's a, uh, it's a combination of, uh, I would say, both uh, uh, short-term as well as uh, medium and long-term kind of facilities. See, you have to really look at uh, what was happening in corporate is that till uh, about a year back, they were able to raise funds at a much, much lower cost in, in the international market. And now with the way anyway inflation has gone up in many of the countries record inflation for many decades clearly the uh, uh, for them to have increased working capital extra they are looking for uh, domestic uh, lenders to lend and that's where we are, that's where we are also seeing good traction happening and also thanks to covid we all had got a good amount of surplus with us and therefore it was helping us to get traction with good rated corporates my, my incremental Corporate banking book has got 90% of my incremental addition is A and above okay. cases. I mean, they also have, except for one account in B and one account in double B, rest all triple B and above, and predominantly it is A and above. Got and wherever you get, you start actually working with them very closely for all their working capital needs. And, yes. Uh, Apex needs. So that's where we are getting. Got that, Mr. Ramkrishnan. Thanks so much for stopping by. NIMS at around 3.1%, loan growth of around 12 to around 13%, lowering of credit costs as well as slippages. You've given us those numbers. Uh, good speaking.